So it's now time for the third exercise. You have to implement these control loops and the one for the DC bus voltage and the one for the AC inverter currents. I would again advise you to make a separate folder for this final exercise. As you can see, I have two implementations, one that corresponds to a PI controller as implemented in the digital control lab and another one that uses this positive feedback implementation of the PI controller. And we can maybe start with this second implementation, have a look at the Simulink model and this is what you obtain. Let us now look at the results. So you recognize the PLL, the two park transformation blocks and the extrapolation of the reference angle that you had obtained in exercise two. Well, here you have the PI controller for the DC bus uh, voltage. As you can see here, I have not implemented the manual mode but I have indeed implemented the tracking mode and the feed forward uh, action. For this PI voltage controller, you don't need any uh, feed forward. This is why the feed forward is connected to uh, zero. Okay. This enable, enabled uh, signal comes from this enable disable button. And when the controller is not enabled, well, you should send it to tracking mode and the signal that you're going to track is of course zero because you want a zero current. Okay. So indeed, this is the feedback, positive feedback implementation of the controller. Let's have a look. This is how it looks like. So what you have over here is the construction of the DQ components of the current set point and this is done using this power balance. So the D component is simply the DC power. You see that this is the DC current times the DC voltage. So you have the DC power and if you look inside we simply divide by 230 square roots of two. So this is this V grid D component. And the Q component is simply constructed from a set point that can be set by the user. Okay. And this set point can be set over here in this block. And you see here that it's set to 10 amps. This D component of the current is not used, so it's not connected. Okay, so in this block over here, you can set the DC bus voltage. And here it's set to 650 volts DC. So let's have a look at the current loop now. It's implemented using this vector PI controller. And the set point is constructed using this power balance block. Remember that it constructs the D and Q components of the inverter currents. The process value comes from the measurements of the inverter currents that are transformed to the DQ framework using a park transform. And you could also use the grid currents. This is why you have this selector over here. It doesn't change a lot from the control perspective. You can see that there is feed forward action that is used here in this PI uh, controller. It's a little bit different than explained in the theoretical course in the sense that the feed forward is the, sen is the sum of two things. Okay, the first term, which is V grid DQ, this is what we had called feed forward in our theoretical uh, part of this video course. And there is a second term over here, and this is what we had called decoupling in our theoretical part of the course. The 
sign here in the theoretical part of the course is a minus sign, but the minus sign is hidden here inside this uh, block. We have to do something when the control block is not enabled, okay? And we have to send it to tracking mode. So when the controller is not enabled, this is a one and this controller goes to tracking mode and it follows this signal MV track that is the same as the one that is used for feed forward. And the idea is to make sure that the output is the same as the output that you will have once the uh, controller is enabled so that all variables are initialized in the correct way. So at the output of this block, we have the V inverter DQ and after inverse park transformation, you obtain the ABC components of the inverter voltage that you can send to your model, okay? And what is important is that in this inverse park transform, we use this extrapolation that we had constructed in the second exercise. And this extrapolation is kind of looking at the reference angle in the future using this ID that we have of the delay in the control loop. Huh? We had a delay of approximately two to three times TS. Well, we can now simulate the system. We push the run button and have a look at the scope. Well, the grid voltage is exactly the same as in exercise one and two. And we can now have a look at the DC bus voltage. As you can see, it takes approximately 200 milliseconds for the DC bus to go to its set point. It starts from this value of 600 volts here that can be set as an initial value in the variables uh, .m file. Uh, you see also the typical response with IMC tuning. The response is quite fast and then you have a little bit of overshoot. Remember that we had set our Q component of the in E inverter set point to 10 amp. And you see indeed that the amplitude is approximately 10 amp. You also see that the inverter current is shifted by 90 degrees with respect to the grid voltage. So we are exchanging reactive power with the grid. Okay, and this is not influencing my DC bus uh, control. There is also a little bit of active, active power that is exchanged, but this active power is so small that you don't see it here. So we can rerun the simulation with a Q component here for the inverter current that is zero and we'll simulate the system for a little bit longer and this is what you obtain and you see now that the inverter current is very small we can have a zoom over here and look at what is happening okay so now you can see that the voltage and the current are 180 degrees out of phase so we're having a current that is negative that is flowing towards the uh, inverter and this is active power that is being exchanged with the grid in order to compensate for the losses in the DC bus. Well we can have a look at the discrete PI implementation that came from the digital control lab and it looks exactly the same the only thing that you have to do of course is to disable the manual mode okay but apart from that 
it doesn't look too different and of course you can simulate the system and you will obtain similar results as you can see this concludes this series of videos on grid converter control i hope you have enjoyed it and i wish you all the best with your three exercises